class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing Game 77 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the Arizona Coyotes, in which the Sharks have lost 5 to 2. So we got to enjoy yesterday's game against the St. Louis Blues for about 24 hours, but now we are faced once again with the crushing realization that indeed the Sharks are the worst team in the league, last place in the league, and will lose more often than not exactly what they ended up doing here against a not actually all that great Arizona Coyotes squad by the score of 5-2. to two. And to jump immediately into it, it starts off with a Coyotes power play goal from Lawson Kraus to make it 1-0 before the Sharks would manage to tie it up with a goal from Henry Thrun. I mentioned in my review yesterday that I would actually like to see Thrun get another shot on the top power play unit here tonight. He was given that specific spot yesterday because of Kalen Addison getting kicked out from a game misconduct, and he looked quite good in that particular role, so I thought David Quinn should give him another look. That's exactly what David Quinn ended up doing. He clearly agreed with me there. And then on top of that, I also mentioned that I would like to see Thrun actually shoot the puck more in this situation because he was really just focusing hard on making passes to players like Granlund and Eklund instead of trying to change things up a bit and take a shot himself pretty much the first shot he ends up just trying in this situation boom it goes straight in to tie the game at one now he would never really try the shot situation again for the rest of the game for whatever reason but it was nice to see him at least do the one time and as such game like I said tied 1-1 the Coyotes though would take their lead back pretty soon after with a goal from O'Brien and it would be a 2-1 game for Arizona by the end of the first period in the second period the only goal that would be scored would be from Luke Cunning as he hits double digit on the year with his 10th of the season to make it 2-2 and this goal comes in part to uh, due to some pretty bad officiating generally the officiating here tonight was completely awful I don't usually comment on such aspects of the game because it usually is you know maybe kind of bad not all that great but not necessarily the end of the world where it happens or it usually balances itself out but there were some just really really soft calls here tonight a uh, phantom hook on a Coyotes player when that never actually happened a phantom Phantom cross check called on Studnika. That was barely even anything. There was also a high stick called onto Thomas Bordlow, and that was clearly a follow through right off of the face off. And then the one call that absolutely should have been made here was actually on Luke Cunnan, where he hits uh, one of the Coyotes player Travis Dermott from behind right into the boards. And usually. I'm kind of on the fence about these types of plays because a lot of the times a player will be facing the play and then immediately turn their back at the last second before the player who's coming to hit them will uh, knock them into the boards and then that'll get called the boarding and I would feel like that's a bit of a cheap call, so to speak. But with Dermot in this situation, he was had his back to the play the entire time. Cunning sees numbers. He sees exactly that and still just rails him into the boards. This was surprisingly somehow not a penalty call. Dermot would not return to the game pretty much after that play. And then it would also directly result to this Cunning goal because Dermot has to go. He has to go pick up his stick. It's a bit of a shell-shocking hit as well. And so that allowed the Sharks to tie the game. So generally, a really rough game for the officiating on both sides, but it worked out in that particular moment in the Sharks. Sharks favored to tie up up the game. But in the third period, I guess maybe karma coming back a bit. The Sharks have not been good recently in the third period. That continues here tonight with a Dylan Gunther goal that immediately puts the Coyotes back in the lead. And then a few minutes later, it is Clayton Keller who gets them the insurance goal. And then finally, an empty netter. The San Jose Sharks, they pull their goaltender with about four minutes left. And they get some okay zone time with their first unit of Eklund, Bordelow, and Granlin. But eventually, after a minute or a minute and a half passes, these players have to head off. You get the slightly lesser skilled players on the ice and immediately the Coyotes are able to take advantage with the empty net goal and as such they win it 5-2. to two. Moving on to the players to talk about, we have Zetterland, Granlin, and Eklund as the top line, the Lund line, so to speak. Uh, this is a situation where Costin is not in the lineup not tonight. This is not a uh, performance issue. It's not a healthy scratch or anything, just that he was sick here tonight. So he jumps out, and the Sharks decide to promote Eklund. Obviously, performance-wise, this is very much deserved with the hat trick that he scored yesterday. But what this does do is heavily load up your top line with literally your three best forwards, kind of throws everybody else to the wolves you could say and so at that point when you do something like that you need your top line to really pull their weight and honestly they didn't really do that uh, Zetterland I thought had a pretty bad game was not particularly noticeable at all Granlin was maybe a step or two above Zetterland where I thought he had a couple of okay looks but still all not all not all that great 
And then when it comes to William Eklund, I thought individually he himself was making a couple of decent chances, generating some plays in, uh, in the offensive zone, but it felt as though he was very much focused on the individual sense. Eklund has been previously over the past few games really been playing with not necessarily the best line mates and I wonder if maybe he's adapted some specific tendencies of more, more so making plays for himself compared to actually bouncing off of his line mates a bit. Here tonight playing with two more skilled players especially Mikhail Granlund who you would think would really be able to work well with Eklund. It didn't really have any sort of chemistry I would say and as such this first line doesn't really managed to do much of anything at even strength. When it comes to the second line, we then had uh, Cunnan and Graf being joined by Justin Bailey here, so clearly a steep drop-off in terms of skill when it comes from face uh, playing with Eklund compared to playing with Bailey, but the second line actually still put in a okay amount of work. It really wasn't all that bad. Uh, Colin Graf obviously would be the biggest focus here. His, his first career game was yesterday, now a second career game right after, though in college I assume he's used to playing back-to-back -back games, so this is not anything out of the ordinary for him uh, here tonight not outstanding or anything there's not a ton of wow moments but he had a couple of really uh, decent plays I would say one great pass to well, a great play and pass to Luke Cunnan. I believe it was in the first period. Cunnan then somehow shot this puck way wide, even though he had a lot of room to shoot at. That could have been a good primary assist for Colin Graf. And then he made another very nice pass to Kyle Burrows a bit later into the game that also could have resulted into a goal. So it's nice to see him at least come close to contributing in those situations. But in one where he didn't really do much of anything, he does pick up his first point of his career with a secondary assist on the Luke Cunnan goal. So generally, there isn't enough, there isn't that much that's wowing us about Graf's performances, but I do say he's been solid enough. I don't know if he's going to manage to maintain a second line spot, though I guess there's not really much better options for San Jose. We shall see what happens over these next few, uh, last few games of the season. When it comes to the other two players, Luke Cunnan I thought was decent enough. Like I said, had that really great chance set it up uh, set up by Graf. He did manage to score a goal here tonight, double digits on the season for himself. Somehow managed to get away with a pretty big boarding penalty. I, I, I'm not saying that that is a positive, but it is something that happened in the game. So I guess that's okay. Uh, and then when it comes to Justin Bailey, again, Bailey, he's just not really a second liner, but he makes solid plays. Uh, there was this one that I thought was really, really impressive. When the Sharks players, pretty much the the four other players on the ice with Bailey were stuck on the ice for a very, very long time, like 90 second, two minute type of shifts. Bailey ends up getting the puck. He's the freshest player on the ice and he makes a nice move to just get through the neutral zone. Most players would then dump that one down, but he actually makes a smart play where he carries it into the zone, passes it off the far side boards to himself because he gets on his high horse and skates into it and then manages to get a shot. It's not a dangerous shot or anything like that, but it kills off a lot of time and allows the shark to get pretty much a full change off in that situation so very very impressive cerebral play from Justin Bailey the type of move that you love to see from your fourth liner but the type of move that from a second liner is still good but maybe not exactly what you're hoping for then when it comes to the third line we had Zadina and Bordelow with Studnika it should be noted that as this game wore on Bordelow did get some shifts up on the second line with Cunnan and Graf Bailey ended up getting a bit demoted but then it kind of reverted back to Bailey on the second lines but just to say that there was some swapping there Bordelow actually hits a uh, a season high in terms of ice time here tonight at about 18 and a half minutes that is a full minute more than any other game he has played this season so he's getting many many shifts in fact he actually was tied for the most shifts out of any forward for the San Jose Sharks here tonight which is funnily enough uh, in a game in which he honestly wasn't that great. He had a couple of solid board battle wins, but he also had a couple of pretty bad board battle losses. So it was kind of a middling type of performance for Thomas Bordlow, but it's good to see that he is managing to win the trust of David Quinn. And it, these were not situations where he was stuck on the ice for like two minutes, and that's what's really inflating his ice time. Like I said, there were a lot of shifts given to him, which shows a lot of trust, and it's nice to see that developing. 
When it comes to the two other players here, Zadina really didn't stand out too, too much for me. When it comes to Studnika, on the other hand, again, I've mentioned the simple type of plays, but if you're going to be not really contributing anything offensively like Studnika has been, you need to make sure that you're also playing some solid defensive hockey, and I just didn't really see that from Studnika. On a couple of these goals, Studnika overcommits defensively in puck-watching situations, which leaves Coyotes players completely wide open. It happens on the first power play goal for the Coyotes, where Studnika abandons the box and ends up going to the same man as Kyle Burrows, which allows Kraus to be wide open for this attempt. And then on the Dylan Gunther goal, which makes it 3-2, this is the game winner of the night, he also overcommits in that situation, which allows Gunther to be more or less wide open here to make it 3-2 for the Coyotes. So just too much of a puck watching situation for Studnika. He needs to be able to clean that up. Like I said, if he's not going to tr- contribute offensively, he needs to be solid defensively. And then when it comes to the fourth line, we have Carpenter, Sturm, and McDonald. Uh, Carpenter draws into the lineup here tonight as a winger on this fourth line. It really doesn't add much of an interesting element here. These three players didn't actually get much done, and that's really that. Then we get to the defensive pairings. We have Ferraro, interestingly enough, paired with Ruda. This is a bit of a weird swap because in yesterday's game against St. Louis, Ferraro was with Burroughs, and I thought that worked rather well. Burroughs had one of his better games as of late, and yet they get swapped here. Uh, Ruda ends up on the top pairing, and I was not very happy with Ruda's performance, in particular on the Coyotes' second goal. This is Liam O'Brien. This is a situation, yes, Blackwood probably could have been able to handle this a bit better in this situation, and had he actually just managed to be a, a bit more stable steady this would have never happened but there's just a lack of urgency in Ruda when he sees the puck behind Blackwood into getting his stick on the ice and forcing this puck back under Blackwood's pads to freeze it up and end the play there it just felt as though Ruda was not in any sort of hurry to actually make this play and it makes me wonder like if this was a playoff game or if the Sharks were a playoff team in a playoff race at the end of the season if Ruda would have had a bit more urgency and actually quickly made that play compared to now where it was extremely extremely lackadaisical as if he was not fully engaged so that's just the type of play that really rubs me the wrong way and I was not particularly happy with how that happened when it comes to the second pairing, we have Thrun and Burroughs. Thrun, as I already mentioned, a solid game here tonight from an offensive perspective. Not only does he get this goal on the power play, but he also had the primary and a pretty nice assist to Cunnan on the only other Sharks goal of the game. Uh, Thrun defensively, I thought there were a couple of moments that were slightly suspect. A few missed cued passes that led to some giveaways for him, but I would say generally was a pretty good game for Thrun and it seems as though David Quinn also agreed with me in some capacity because Thrun ends up with actually the most ice time out of any defenseman for the San Jose Sharks here tonight. This is likely because the Sharks did get a lot of power plays which gave him a lot of power play ice time so in terms of even strength Thrun does not lead in that particular category but it still goes to so still goes to show that close to 23 minutes on the ice pretty decent here when it comes to the fourth or the third pairing for san jose we have of course kalen addison two games ago he gets two minor penalties that's something that's not great but not the end of the world yesterday's game against st louis he gets another two minor penalties and then a game misconduct on top of that and then here tonight he gets yet another misconduct in the third period which sees him miss the rest of the game there is clearly some sort of temper issue with Kalen Addison over these last uh, few games that he has played you can't just keep getting kicked out of the game you are a defenseman which is even more important than playing a forward because you leave the team with five defensemen in the lineup technically you know Jacob McDonald plays defense so it's not the end of the world for San Jose but it's clearly not a habit that you want to just continue making and yet for whatever reason I don't know what's actually going on what's actually being said Addison seems to find his way back to the dressing room way earlier than anybody else on the Sharks roster and that's just something that cannot continue and then when it comes to Mark Edward Vlasic I thought he played rather well in the previous game against St. Louis here tonight not as noticeable but still relatively solid and then we have the goaltender for the San Jose Sharks Mackenzie Blackwood whose game tonight was not great I felt as though he definitely could have made a few of these saves the Lean O'Brien one you're hoping he could have maybe managed to handle that puck a bit better a couple of these shots by Keller and Gunther beat him just straight 
straight up cleanly. So you're thinking maybe he could have made a save there. I don't know if he ended up could have been the difference maker considering the Sharks only had two goals on the night, but it definitely could have helped out making this one slightly closer. So not the best outing for the Sharks goalie, but that will do it for this review. The Sharks will be back in action on Tuesday. Uh, against the Calgary Flames with just five games left on the schedule. It should be noted that with the Blackhawks otherwise in action here tonight also losing, the Sharks still find themselves seven points deep into last place in the league. And with just those five games left, they'd have to win four more games than Chicago, meaning the Sharks would somehow have to go four and one while the Blackhawks lose the rest of theirs to lose this last place spot. So it is almost completely locked up at this point. Class dismissed.